one of the main reasons for algebra is to solve problems. So in order to be able to do that, we need to be able to translate words into algebraic expressions. So when problem solving or completing application problems, we need to try and develop those algebraic expressions from a worded question. Now application problems need to be read carefully. The order in which the terms of, of expressions are written depend on the specific way in which the questions are phrased. And we'll look at that now. So in these examples, it says write mathematical expressions for the following and use n for the unknown number. And note that it says use little n. In algebra, little n is different to capital N. Okay, so remember that. So here we have a number is decreased by 10. So that means the number is going to be ending up less. So we're taking away from the number. So if our number is n and we're decreasing it by 10, it's just n take 10. And that's a mathematical expression. There's no equal sign, it's not an equation, it's just representing a number decreased by 10. Next we have a number is subtracted from 10. So it's like if my number was 2 and I subtracted it from 10, I'd get 8. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going 10 take away n. Okay, so that number is subtracted from 10. Now we've got 10 less than a number. Well, if my number was 33, 10 less than it would be 33 take away 10, which would be 22. So in this case, if my number is n, if I want 10 less than it, it's n take 10. Decrease a number by 10. Well, again, I need to, if my number was 50 and I decreased it by 10, it would become 40. So it's whatever the number is, take away 10. Now the difference of a number and 10. So what's the difference between a number and 10? That would be n take 10. Or you could have, if the number is smaller than 10, 10 take n. So note that in this case, we have n take 10 is the expression for a number of different worded problems. Okay, so you just have to get used to the map or the, the way they phrase it to know what they're asking. So get used to the language. Now in the previous examples, the number was defined for, the variable was defined for us. It said let the number be n. Now that may not always be the case and it's important to clearly define any variables that are used in the development of expressions so people know what you're talking about. And we do that by using letters to represent our variables. And it makes sense to try and use something that that represents the, the variable well. So for example, if we're looking at number, use n for number. You wouldn't do this though if um, you were using, if the variable is something to do with L, because L can, be looking, can look like um, the number one. So just be careful. Um, Z can look like the number two, S can look like the number five. So we do try and avoid certain letters to use for variables. So in here it says, write mathematical expressions for the following. Kelly is six centimetres shorter than John. How tall is Kelly? So here our variables are the heights of Kelly and John. So to define our variable, we could say let height of Kelly equal K and John equal J. Okay, you could have used little k, little j if you wanted to. If you do that, we often use cursive letters. So let's go back. Kelly is six centimetres shorter than John. Well, if Kelly's height is k and she's six centimetres less than John, then we'd want to take six away from John's height and then we would get Kelly's height. That could also be expressed as k equals j take six. Okay, the next one, the length of a rectangle is two metres more than twice its width. So again, we have to define our variable. So length equals L or capital L um, and width equals little w. It's up to you what you want to use. So now we go back and we read the length of a rectangle. So the length of a rectangle is equal to two meters more than twice its width. Well, twice its width would be two W, but we want two meters more than that. 
okay? Next, if it costs $1.80 for a newspaper and $8.95 for a magazine, what will be the total cost of buying N newspapers and M magazines? Well, we'll let cost equal C. We already have the, our variables for how many magazines we're buying and how many news, newspapers we're buying. So that's given to us. So our cost is going to be, it's $1.80 for a newspaper and we're buying N newspapers. So that's going to be 1.8 times N plus our magazine is $8.95 and we're buying M of them. So what that means, if we had three newspapers, we'd go 1.8 times three. And if we had two magazines, we'd add 8.95 times two, and that would give us our cost.